my name is Kate Desforges and I'm currently spending a year learning stone lithography at Leicester Print Workshop. I'm being taught by Serena Smith who works here as a technician and I feel very privileged to be spending a year doing something I love. Stone lithography is a method of producing a print. It was invented in the early 19th century and for a time was the main method of commercial colour printing until it was replaced by offset lithography. Um, it's now used mainly by artists to create fine art prints. It differed from all the other known methods of printing at the time by making use of the chemical principle that oil and water will not mix. It's a planographic printmaking technique, meaning that the print is taken from a smooth, chemically prepared surface rather than a surface which is etched away or cut out. Lithographic stones are made from limestone and are actually no longer naturally available from source, so have to be bought second hand. The stone surface is ground down to a fine grain using different grades of grit and a bit of elbow grease. The stone is drawn onto using greasy materials such as lithographic pencils and crayons, lithographic touches which are grease suspended in water. When applied to the stone these materials create a water repelling hydrophobic area. When the drawing is finished, gum arabic is then applied to the stone, which creates a water-retaining, hydrophilic, non-image area. Sometimes a very small amount of nitric acid is added to the gum in order to prevent the grease within the stone from spreading too far. Proof prints are then taken by washing off the gum, and whilst the stone is kept damp, greasy printing ink is rolled on which adheres only to the greasy image areas. The beauty of stone lithography for me is the particular quality of the marks it produces. It's the closest form of printmaking to drawing, and for me drawing has always been an integral part of my work. Stone lithography isn't really a process which you can learn from books. Um, there's so much about it which has to be experienced. Um, the sound of the stone being grained down to a smooth surface, the feel of drawing onto the stone, dusting it with chalk, the feel of the press lever when it's put down, whether you've got too much or too little pressure, um, pulling a finished print from the stone. And that's what I like about it. You have to get to know it, practice it, improve and develop. It's a very intuitive process. You can do steps A, B and C and get an end result, but unless you really understand why you're doing these things and what it's going to achieve, you can't figure out when things go wrong. Um, and I think the intuitive part of it challenges me, and I like that. Um, and sometimes I tend to see things in black and white, but you can't really do that with lithography. You have to have a more holistic approach and treat each stone individually according to the drawing and how it's been made. Um, therefore the resulting print isn't just a reproduction of a drawing, it's the end result of a whole collaborative process between artist and printer, whether they happen to be the same person or not. In any other printmaking technique, there's a certain physical boundary between the image in the artist's mind and the reproduction of that image on the matrix in front of them. With lithography, there is no intermediary. It's brain, hand, stone. There is a nice conflict there, I think, the fact that the process allows the artist to be so free and expressive with mark making without having to master any new tools. But that is then such a delicate and skillful and lengthy process to transform that drawing into an image which can be printed from. And this is the reason it's so important that the technique is kept alive and that people are allowed the opportunity to learn the skills necessary to continue to help other artists develop their work using lithography. 
for a lot of painters and drawers it would be an ideal way to make a print.